Thank you for joining us for this mini tutorial. Today we're going to discuss how you can place boxes around your information on your custom forms, such as invoices or packing lists, etc. The first step is to select the form that you wish to place the boxes on. So I'm going to go to the Accounts Receivable, Utilities, Maintain AR Forms, For this example, we're going to use an invoice. And I'm just going to use the invoice plain paper standard white. Now if we go to the preview tab, we can see what the form looks like before we've made any changes. You can see that there are boxes around the information up here as far as description, the salesperson, etc. But the details section does not have boxes around it. So that's what we're going to do today, is place boxes around the detail section of the form. So let's go ahead and get started. We need to scroll down on the form where we actually want to place the boxes. And again, we're going to be doing this in the detail section. And what we need to do, because first of all, the required shipped and back ordered quantity fields are very close together, so I'm just going to shrink the left side of these fields a tiny bit so that we have some space that we can see in between each field. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and select our line, and we're going to place our line on the form. Now, it looks very strange at first because it's selected for top. So we're going to go ahead and change that to left. And now it's a line on the left-hand side of the form. I'm going to make some edits to that field. I'm just going to grab the right-hand side of it and drag it over because I don't want it overlapping my required field. I'm going to stretch it up, stretch it down because we're eventually going to want that line to go all the way from the top to the bottom of this section. Okay, so now we've added our first line onto the form, so let's go ahead and go to preview so we can take a look at what this looks like. Now there's a few things that I want to discuss while we're looking at this. The first thing is that, as you can see, even though we've added that line, there's gaps between that line. The other thing is also that it's not quite lined up yet, so we want to go ahead and we're going to move this over so that it does line up. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to do one small thing that will get rid of most of the gaps between those lines. We just need to right click within our field and select stretch with parent. The other thing that I wanted to do is I want to go ahead and move this over so that it lines up with this line here. One of the tools that's available that's the best thing for doing something like this is to go up to our toolbars and there is a nudge tool. This tool allows you to move that line ever so slightly and then you can go to the preview tab and come back until you get it exactly where you want it so that it's lining up to the best that we can do. So now that I have the nudge on here, our, our field is selected. So I'm just going to nudge it over to the right a few times until it looks like it might be lined up. Then I'm going to go to preview and actually it does look pretty good. That looks like it's lined up pr probably as close as we can get it to those boxes above. Now to get that last bit of the gaps to go away between those lines, what we need to do is we're going to right click on the actual detail section right here and we're going to select position and then we're going to change this bottom offset to a zero. There is one other thing that this does though, so I'm going to go ahead and show you. Once we say OK, then we go to Preview, we can see that we now have a solid line on the left-hand side, so we no longer have any gaps, but it does remove any space between your line items. 
So one thing to keep in mind is that if you have long descriptions for your line items, or possibly um, the second item that you have on your invoice is a comment, and it is not, it does not have an item number, the description for the comment may look like it belongs to the actual first line item. So that's just something to keep in mind for um, when we are adding these boxes around the detail section on the form. In order to get a solid line, you have to remove that bottom offset, but by doing so, you also remove the spaces between your line items. Okay, so now we're going to add the line that goes around the bottom of the detail section. So I'm going to click on the line field again. Now this line has to go in the group footer, and then we have to move it up as close as we can get it so that it's touching the line in the detail section. Now the first thing we're going to do is recognize that it is a top, which is what we want. And we're going to stretch this line so that it goes the entire length of our detail section. And then we're going to move that field up as high as we can get it. We're going to go to the preview and take a look. Go back to design. I want to move it up just a little bit more. Okay, and now it's actually touching that line on the left hand side, but again you can see that there's just a little tiny bit where it's overlapping. So that's another place where that nudge tool comes in handy. So now I'm going to use the nudge tool to nudge that line as little as I can over to the right. So I need to click on my field that I want to nudge. Then I'm just going to click on it one time and then go to the preview. And that's pretty darn close. So for me, I'm just going to leave it right where it is. Okay, so now I'm going to add some of the other lines onto this form. I'm going to line up some lines that go in between the required, the ship, the back ordered, in between item number description, and etc. across my form. So I'm going to select the line and click where I want that line. Now I'm going to go up and change it from top to left. I'm going to shrink that down so it's not overlapping, remember. Then I'm going to stretch it and right click and select stretch with parent and then I can go to preview and see which way that line needs to move. I'm going to nudge it to the left a little bit more. That's pretty good. So now we can go back and add our next line. to be nudged a little bit to the left. A little bit more. That's pretty close. Change this to left. Shrink it down. Stretch it. Stretch with parent. That one needs to go to the right. Okay. All right. And that one's actually pretty close right there. and 
select stretch with parent. That one needs to go to the right. A little bit more. That's pretty good. Change this to the left. Stretch with parent, and that needs to go to the left. Probably one more. That's pretty good. Now we need to get that line that goes down the right hand side. Select our line. Place it on here and select left. Actually, I'm going to select right for this one. Stretch with parent. Preview, and I know it has to go over to the left. So we're going to nudge, nudge, nudge. Probably just a little bit more. Now, at the top, that looks pretty good. The only thing on this form right now is that that bottom line is going just a little bit over to the right past that end line. So this is where it gets just a little bit tricky because we have the left line perfect, so we can't nudge it because if we nudge it to the left, then it's going to be off on this side. So we want to probably just shrink that bottom line as little as we possibly can. So we're going to select that and try to drag it in just ever so slightly. Go back to preview. Actually, I believe that it pulled it out to the right, even though I was dragging it into the left. And again, this is where it does get tricky because it's all about how the mouse is going to work with you. Okay. Now it's just a little bit too far. So this is where it becomes, if your mouse just won't work with you, you'll basically just need to get it as close as you can for your eye. That's pretty close right there. So for me, that would be just fine. Now the last thing that we can do is we can add boxes around the summary section if you would like boxes around, for example, the invoice total, the tax, etc. So there's actually an easier way to do that. We can just click on the field and select border and say all and that will border that. And then we can do the same thing for the amount field select border all and that will border that then we can go to the preview tab and as you can see they are um, they do have the boxes around them now if we want to move this over so that it lines up on the right hand side we can do so So we're just going to nudge that. Nudge it a little bit more. 
and that's pretty close. So as you can see, there is actually a way to get those boxes around your form. And actually, it looks like as we were moving some things, we lost our left-hand line here. So we're going to go ahead and fix that. And these are things that can happen very easily as you're making changes. So I just need to select that, and I'm going to stretch it just. That's pretty close. We could work with this a little while longer if we wanted to get that corner perfect, but this is pretty good. So this is what my form now looks like with the boxes around it. So if we went back to design, we could save our form with our new name. And then say OK. Thank you for joining us today for our mini tutorial on creating the boxes on your custom forms. You can come back at any time for more mini tutorials on common tasks in Sage BusinessWorks.